So here's a little bit of a shop update. I'm starting to get some of my components in for doing some of these projects. I did go ahead and uh, paint this uh, OBS board that I had left over from the wall. And then because it gets rained on, make it last a little bit longer. Although this one I had below, you can see it's ex exploding there. It lasts quite a, quite a long time and it did what it did. Just hold stuff here while I'm going in and out. But I had leftover paint from painting the outside there. So I went ahead and paint it, make it last a little bit longer. But in the end result, this is going to go away. And I'm going to put like a, a, a waterproof stainless steel type table or something like that. That won't be affected by the rain. Uh, but I went ahead and mounted my new vise. Uh, the $20 vise there. So that's all made on made it on there. I mean, the board, the the bottom part is just held by these uh, cheap uh, saw horses, but stability wise, it's not the best for wiggle wise. But just holding stuff, it does a good job. Um, I'm actually going to be putting the rails on there because there's slats on the saw horses to put across members across, and then that'll even stabilize it a little bit more. But then again, not a huge difference. Uh, but the components I'm getting in, I got some of my sanding stuff, uh, the war against rust. Um, and that is to do with fixing this guy up. Basically, I think I'm going to get this thing working. Only thing I'm really going to use it for is cross cutting like two by fours and any of this kind of stuff. Like for making my, uh, um, motor mounts there, engine stands, outboard stands, doing that kind of stuff. Maybe, uh, make my own shelving. All this stuff I make, I either use my handsaw, I've got up there a Stanley handsaw, or I use a, a jigsaw, a hand a jigsaw. So not the best in the world, but I got all these projects done doing that. But I'll use this table saw basically for that. So the couple of things I wanna do with this is one, make sure it's running good. Two, well, part of one is uh, checking to make sure this blade works good. Uh, otherwise, I'll replace that for a better blade. Once I know it works, I'm waiting for the uh, push handles and safety gear for it. This does not have any type of safety at all. It doesn't have a splitter. It doesn't have a um, one of those rip guards. It doesn't have the whole plastic shield. Nothing. So uh, I'm kind of hesitant about it, but I've got some of those sliding plastic hand tools that'll like keep your fingers away so once i have those then uh, i'll test this out as is if it works which it should because the guy was using it right up till the end there um then i'm going to do a couple of other processes one is i've already got these casters and i'm going to go ahead and put two casters on probably those two so it lifts this way gets on the wheels and then i could scoot this out and about because i can't have it that close to the wall I was thinking about putting them on the back too, so it would just come out this way, but I think, uh, I don't know, I'll think I have to think that through, because it is pretty wide here. If I use like the 2x8s, or the 8 foot, 2x4s, but the 8, eight foot long ones, or 10 foot long ones. But I was thinking I'd put the two skinnier sides, because it lifts easier, gets it on the wheel, and then I'd roll it this way, and then I'd have it across here, but I don't know, I'm thinking about it. I think I'm still gonna do it there first because that's the tilting side will be easier to lift on that. Gets it on the wheels and then I can just kind of shimmy it wherever it needs to go. So that's probably it. But um, I had these casters on there. I'm actually gonna do that today. I just got my wire uh, brushes in, strip discs uh, for my grinder. Um, so I already tested it out and it worked good. You can see all the scaling on here already. So this thing got flooded salt water it was on a canal uh so it probably flooded his shop and then that's where the water level hit you can see on all four of them it's the same spot but in order to weld i wanted to grind these off so well i wanted to grind these off anyway so i could throw some paint on there uh, i'll suck if these legs deteriorate and then it gets all wobbly but uh i'll go ahead and grind those uh, the rest off weld on these casters i'm going to cut off the end here so the wheel sits below and then that'll go all the way down so the wheel will basically be touching the ground while the feet are touching the ground so as soon as I put any tilt on it it'll get on the rollers and then uh, that should work out there but 
that's one of the plans I'll be working on probably today. But these are kind of give you updates on uh, what we're doing. I'm throwing away as much stuff as I can. I'm cleaning out the tackle room as well. So I'm getting a bunch of stuff out of there. Just basically lightening the load. Um, I don't want to get into a hoarder situation. So basically what I made agreement with myself is that... I could bring more stuff in like this equipment and this other stuff but I have to counter it by getting rid of other stuff and the way I'm going to do that is is either by volume by the shape size diameter of it or by weight so I might bring in a big old bulky vacuum cleaner but I might not find something that much volume to send but I might throw away stuff that weighs that much and then uh, that'll be my compensation for it oh here's another thing that uh, we upcoming project i went by my steel scrap yard just down the road and then picked up these two uh i think they're trailer rims steel and uh one of them right off the bat is going to become my uh i have a bench grinder coming so i'm going to do a stand i'm going to try a wooden four by four post and then up to whatever and just try to make it out of wood and see how that goes and then if not i forgot i had this which is the neck to my uh trailer that i replaced and i think that's pretty close to four by four as well it's kind of rusted out but it doesn't matter there's still good sections of it um and i can cut that and then do the same thing and weld it but i'm going to try because it's easier and the bench grinder won't take a lot of force necessary for it that I'm going to probably cut out a square in the rim, sink the the 4x4 down to the ground so that it's the same ground height as the rim, and then uh, weld braces on it, maybe use rebar that comes up on all four sides, like that, and then just make a wood base and then have my bench grinder on that. That way I can just kind of roll it out of the way. And then the other one is uh, I could possibly do is my vise instead of having on the table I'll, i could build it on one of these so that's another project that's coming around pretty quick yeah so that's kind of a quick update and i'm gonna give you kind of little updates as we move along so that's the plan Yeah, that'll work. Alright, so that's kind of the gist. This is sitting on the ground, this is sitting on the ground. So as soon as I put any tilt on it, it'll start putting the pressure on the wheels and then I could roll it around. So now I'm just gonna put a clamp on these and then uh, give it a quick little weld. Yeah, I'll be testing my welder as well. Put a few tacks on there and test it out. I did pick up some uh, uh, compression clamps trigger clamps but uh, this is a metal to metal so plus I'm gonna be really hot so I don't want to melt those plastic things but uh, that's locked up there so let me tack those together all right gonna bring out the MIG welder that's all set up uh, I got to drop the side panel down when I open up this the side panel of the welder because that has my welding guide uh, I'm going straight into the wall 110 plug. I do have my eight gauge extension, but don't need it uh, when I'm working on here. Uh, gas is hooked up. Uh, we're looking at, I'd probably say between 18 and 16 gauge, probably 18 gauge. And then we're using steel solid wire, this flex core solid wire. I'm doing solid wire with CO2 7525 argon CO2 got 0.03 wire so we just come over here and we're gonna go to 2 and 35 so the 2 is the uh, the power range so we're gonna go to 2 voltage 
and then right around 35 for the wire speed and that should be it i'm going to check my gas range there right between 15 and 20 that's good trim my wire and gas is on that's on ground is on so i think we're good to go take off my safety glasses i'm going to use these welding ones i'm going to go to on Hopefully not burn out my GoPro. You know what? I'm not going to do this on my GoPro because this is my good GoPro camera. I don't want to melt it the, the sensor. So you'll see it after the fact. Maybe I'll do it from far away if I can. We're done welding it up man burnt through a lot of spots but uh i'm gonna go ahead and just do what i should have done earlier it's dirt underneath but there's sawdust and stuff and there's gonna be more sawdust if i use that to cut so i've got my hose to the uh fish cleaning station there so i'll just have to bring it over here hose this all down really good so it soaks underneath and then use all this stuff but all right, good enough. Spinsies. All right, they're both off the ground when they're sitting there. Then when I want to move it, just got to put it on the angle. And there it goes. Roll it where I need it. So that'll work out. Oops. So I just need to pull it out there or I'm going to go long ways and then I cut this way. So yeah, I think we're good and done. So that'll last for a while. All right. While I had it upside down, I went ahead and lubed the, uh, the little shaft there that this rides on. So it was really stick oops. It was really sticky before, but that's much better. There we go. Nice 10 inch blade. Then uh next I'm gonna work on this countertop. Uh I don't think I'm gonna use those wire wheels on it. I think I'm just gonna use some awesome sauce, spray it down, use a um green pad scotch bright pad and just rough it and then i'll probably will hit this with the wire wheel since i've got uh, this and then that should clean up that pretty well and uh that should be all i needed well i could close that down but i don't really care about that because i want this surface smooth this is aluminum so i don't really want to use anything real aggressive on it i just want to clean the surface on it so i'm gonna do that here real quick I ended up going to my orbital sander, hitting it with some 240 grit because uh, what was on there was a layer of corrosion. It's that aluminum corrodes and then that was why it was so rough. It's like sandpaper, but uh, that scotch bright didn't really do much. But yeah, that orbital sander just made it just smooth. It's like glass now. So I might do another hit on it 
later um, maybe go to some 500 and then just oil it down but nice slides like glass all right the next little quick project I'm gonna be using my tools for is I need to build a bunch of uh, spare shear pins uh, this is for my prop there it basically ends up going through the main shaft and then the slot here and uh, what that does is when the prop hits the bottom or something solid that shock will shear that pin and then the prop will free spin versus sending that shock up through the motor and breaking stuff so what I basically just have this brass rod here and then I just cut them into one inch sections so I want to just get my ruler get my marker put a bunch of uh, one inch marks and then I've got a Dremel die grinder that uh, I'll cut them all out and uh, being held up with my new vise here all right got our marks in there so let's uh, start chopping them Bam, one and done. Before the only way I had to do it was I used some vice grips in one hand and the cutter in the other and just kind of tried to held it and it would go flying all over the place. It was dangerous, stupid, took forever. Much better this way. All right, there we go. I came up with 11 of them off of that one little bar there. Uh, these basically sell for about five to seven dollars each. And I probably have a dollar, two dollars into the whole thing. So that, just that there, paid for this, paid for a lot of stuff. So yeah, nice. So two of these will go into my little holder in here. That holds the uh, spares. So I've got spare shear pins and then the spare cotter pins as well. Well, that's where they go. And then uh, I keep a few of these in a little plastic bag in my dry box and then I have a pack that I keep uh, spare over here. So there you go, another project done. This is the other thing I use my patio workshop for. It's also my dryer. <laughs> using a dryer and the keys is crazy especially like mine when it's actually inside the house so hate using it in there but rarely do just put it out here and a few hours this is all dry but also a reason why my utility bills are under fifty dollars a month <laughs> all right here's another shop update bam 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 i got lights uh before i just had this switch here and I had that little round yellow, <laughs> very dull light. I've actually wired in outside lights so I can have this illuminated there. So I've kind of tied that into that switch, but I definitely needed light in here. So I got these uh, super cheap Amazon shop lights. I got a 10 pack for around $80. So it was about eight bucks each, couldn't beat that. Uh, three of them went in here uh three went into the shirt warehouse and three went into the kitchen warehouse where i've got the vertical jigs and stuff and then i've got one in the hallway where i have my chum nets there so that was all 10 of them uh that allowed me to free up these lights because this is the only things that was lighting up the shirt room is i had three of these or four of those one down each aisle so i could pull all those out but uh, I'll show that later on my next warehouse update. But anyways, that is the light setup done. Um, I got it on a, uh, I guess it's a surge protector, a little bit of a surge protector as my light switch. Um, instead of wiring it into the house wiring, I was thinking about splitting it in there, but then I figured, ah, what the hell, I'll do it this way because this is how I did the bedroom as well. So I didn't have to splice into any wires. The kitchen ones, I did splice into them. So I did it both ways. But this way is a little bit more convenient because now I have an outlet over here that can reach this table uh, as needed. Boom. 
and plus I hated where that switch is because it's never within reach of going in or out so when it's off at nighttime and I'm inside I have to come all the way around and search for it and hit it uh, plus I usually have the garbage can here so you got to reach around to do that or when I'm coming at night from the outside uh, from kayaking then I come through here and then I have to go all the way again over there to turn any sorts of lights on so now I've got it right by the door and then boom boom with the surge, uh, surge protectors the multi outlet so that's good still kept the manual switch in case I need to uh, maneuver them around uh, they daisy chain so it's got the same switch here and they just plug into each other so it makes it really easy there then uh, what I did is I got a 15 foot three outlet um, it's not a three on the end it's uh, every third section there's an outlet so I had spare so I sourced it so that I could have an outlet right here and zip tied it in there and then I could use that to power the stuff here in the corner um, but otherwise I just ran it all the way down there's another outlet there but that's not going to be too functional unless I want to put like an extension cord off of there but don't really have a need for that because I've got a plug there and then this plug here so I've got enough plugs for that I just needed it primarily for the light and then these extra outlets were just a plus by rigging it this way instead of just going directly into that Romex there and then it'll be all on just that light switch which I hated so this worked out really well so it killed two burns with one stone but that should do really well another update to the shop is I got my bench grinder in as well as a wire wheel it came with a medium grit and a fine grit but I went ahead because I want a wire brush uh, salt water corrodes everything so rust is the biggest thing I'll use this for so I want to have the wire wheel I just got a little DeWalt wire brush this is an eight inch three quarter horse just a compact little light duty one but it'll do for what i'm going to use it for um got it on amazon i think they're regular 130 bucks i got it for 70 through amazon warehouse open box special works good no complaints yet and um i think i am going to just like the vice for a temporary i've got the vice here i'll probably go ahead and mount the bench grider here but my first project is going to be making a bench grinder stand uh, just basically like that. Just a rim on the bottom, 4x4 four four post, and then some sort of T along the top, probably with uh, some uh, channel iron I'll scrounge up and then just make it like that. Since this doesn't require very much support, it's heavy, but that'll be fine right there. Um, and like I said, I do have some 4x4 four four, um, metal which was my uh a trailer tongue that i could make a stand with as well but i think we're good for now uh, until i get a stainless steel bench um because the rain comes in and just saturates this table and all the stuff on it so i don't really want those things there but that is where we're at so nice all right let me introduce you to the newest piece of equipment i picked up for my patio workshop I uh, got a little metal band saw. It's a vertical and horizontal. I actually had one of these about 30 years ago. The same exact one. Uh, I actually bought it from my dad, but I used it primarily. But it's a nice four and a half inch metal cutting band saw. Uh, I think it's Chicago Electric or Central Electric or something like that. But it's basically Harbor Freight's version. And then they replaced it with a newer one that's painted red. But otherwise fairly similar uh, item there but uh, this one was made in 2005 so it's old but then again it's the one made in Taiwan versus the old the newer China ones I don't know if that's better or not but it's still cranking and I'm happy with it so i uh, been test cutting some stuff I do need to try to get the plate uh, shelf that goes on here the guy was sawing it for his girlfriend and uh he's seen the plate but he doesn't he couldn't find it that night that i picked it up so he's going to let me know if he finds it or not but i like to have that because i would do a lot of just hand cutting but otherwise uh it's primarily for is cutting from down here and just gravity feeding but let me show you here real quick now prior to this the way i was cutting any type of metal was with my hand grinder and using either a grinding disc or a cutting blade on it but it would work but it's messy it takes a long time and you can see how rough those cuts are 
that's another reason why I got a uh, bench grinder but to fix these things but with this it makes things a lot easier so let me show you an automatic cutoff switch here when this tab comes down it clicks it off and there we go so a lot nicer cuts than versus that uh, I was cutting through some uh, test welds I was making as well as it's a diamond plate so uh, that's why I hit spots and then jump and then go smooth but yeah, that's how easy it is. Then I'm able to cut from up here as well once I get the plate. I could hand feed it, but there's actually a, a fairly nice tabletop that it sits on and then I could cut it that way as well. So it's gonna come in really handy. Uh, it cuts metal, but I've cut wood on it as well and it does a good job there. PVC tubing it'll be very useful for, but this is gonna help tons being able to cut this metal stock. But otherwise, that's it. it. Comes with the wheels already, so that makes it nice. Uh, very chintzy base, but uh, they seem to hold up. Uh, but uh, a lot of guys do is they take off the base, the two sides there, and then make it a basically a desktop cutting uh, source there. So that's easy enough. Or just build a heavier duty uh, stand. But I'm not going to be really moving it very much. So once I get it in the spot, that'll pretty much be it. Uh, one third horsepower motor, uh, four and a half inch cutting, and yeah, not much else to it. There's on off switch, this does the uh, bracket there, whatever. I'm oiling everything up because it hasn't been lubricated at all. This is kind of like a counterbalancing spring there, so it doesn't just drop, you get some tension on it, and then uh as you twist this knob here that'll tighten the tension so it'll put less pressure on the drop so it doesn't like bind up the uh, the blade so you can adjust it that way um, pretty basic setup here uh, I do need to fix this cover since the uh, the bracket side here, this is the kind of the hinge side of it, and then it opens up from here in order to get out the uh, the belts and the gears there, but it doesn't affect anything. I'll probably just put a Velcro strap on it or something, clamp it. But otherwise, yeah, very happy. Oh, um, they wanted 150 bucks. I entered, offered 100, and then so I got it for 100 bucks. Had to drive down with the trailer, pick it up last night, but. That went smooth, so very, very happy. So I've made a little plate, or a template at least. It actually works like it's supposed to, but uh, so I want the plate so I can keep it on, but not a big plate like the stock one because you have to take it off each time. But I want it to be able to still use the uh, vert horizontal cutting and the vertical plate, leave it on there, so this clears just like it is there so i've got my measurements all set up so i can go three quarters of an inch longer on this side so it'll give me more of a platform for laying stuff on there and then i just need to chop it off here and then start an angle that goes there to clear that corner there right there so it just needs to be able to clear this corner so if I chop it straight down there, boom, 
and then uh, we should have enough clearance there. Yeah, that'll work. It'll just be a little bit narrow on this side. But that works. This actually works fine, so I'll use it as is. But then uh, I'll look for some uh, aluminum, maybe a little bit thicker, maybe like a quarter inch. Because uh, I want, I need to countersink these two screws there. And that'll be pretty much it. For the table saw, uh, I finally got in my little safety grippers to help slide and push stuff through so I don't chop my fingers off. And I've been playing with cutting stuff. Uh, but one of the things I want to make <clears throat> is a cross cut sled. So that'll be our first project for this guy because primarily all I'm going to use this for is cutting 2x4s for making the engine stands, making shelving and stuff. So that's pretty much it. So let us begin. Alright, started off with this quarter inch oak strip. It's a quarter inch thick um, by one and a half inches wide by 36 inches. So I just ended up cutting it to 18 inches. So I got two pieces. Then I lined it up with the table saw, got it perfectly split in half. Um, and what that gave me is two strips they're just a bit probably like an eighth of an inch too wide but this thing is not the best in regards for fine-tuned cutting so i couldn't use this to i guess i could try it but uh, i thought it'd be a better idea to do it nice and slow so what i've been doing like this one's almost done is uh just putting it in my vise and then using an orbital sander and just going back and forth in even strokes and just reducing it and flipping it, trying it, flip it, try it, flip it, and just kind of basically sanding it to fit. So it hasn't been too horrible and we're getting pretty close there. So I've just got to find some of these high spots and work on them. All right, now we're getting to the last part of the fine tuning. So works right in there until right about there so that's our little high spot so i'm gonna work on this side a little bit knock that down and this side should be done and by george i think we got it so it just slides in there perfect plus it's a little bit down below so when i bolt it up it's going to pull it off the bottom so it's going to free be free floating there's a little bit of drags, but I think that's going to be okay because it'll keep those tolerances tight and then just running it back and forth is going to basically sand it down correctly. So this side is done. All right, got both runners set there. So now we just need to build the top, front and back uh, and then run it through the saw. So pretty quick and easy. All right, I bought a couple of two foot by two foot uh, uh, plywood here um, this one's a little bit thinner that one's a little bit thicker uh, the thinner one is going to be my sliding base and then I'm going to use the uh, thicker ones to build my front and back walls so I've got it kind of cut down so this is the depth that it's going to be sliding this way but I'm going to be trimming off that much I think I've got it at 18 inches wide and then I'll lose probably almost inch and a quarter an inch and a quarter so about two and a half inches of gap I'm going to lose in here by putting those two fences and then uh, but that should be enough there so over a foot but uh, yeah I've got my line set up my fence is set up so I'm just gonna cut it up here
scary as hell. <laughs> All right, check this out. So it's the middle of the day. You can kind of see what it looks like here. But then, bam, lights, even during the day, make a huge difference so I can see. But now what I'm doing is for these channel tracks, right now that I've got them so they sit just below the edge here. But now I'm going to be gluing them to the board here so I want them sticking up. So when I bond it to it, uh, they're gonna be basically just floating above this bottom rail, but I need to get them up So I'm gonna use these pennies in the channel. They fit perfectly Not straight down this way, but there's the channel slot there. So I'm just gonna put five of them Spaced out and Then what that allows me to do now is when I have these in the channel now they're raised so just a hair, millimeter maybe. So then I'm gonna put glue. I went ahead and pre-drilled some holes here. So I'm gonna put uh, screws in there uh, on top of the glue, but that'll keep the uh, this board from cracking when I tighten it down. Uh, I'm just gonna space them out evenly there. Put some glue on and then just flip this board using that edge and then just kind of dropping it on there and then put some weight on there and then get that glued down and then the track holds it perfectly aligned so it should be perfectly aligned so let me do that next all right let that dry for about an hour so we should be able to just flip this over and our tracks on there nice and solid Take out our pennies. Okay. And then should fit. And slide. Nice. Got the screws ready to go, but uh, I have a counter sinking drill bit coming on Monday, so I'll wait to use that. I can actually just use a big drill bit and make it work, but since I bought those, might as well use them. They'll make it a lot cleaner, so just need to have these recessed so they don't stick out, but they're actually on there pretty solid. Next, I need to make the uh, front and back side rails. I'm gonna do uh, four pieces and then glue two of them together, two of them together. So it'll be a bit thicker. So I'm gonna set this right out about four inches and then I'm gonna do four strips.
And this is what I use for cleanup. Next, we're going to glue two of these together, two of those together. Next, we're gonna throw on a few clamps. Let's see, I'm gonna have okay. Let that dry. All right, front and back rails are done. I'm going to give it a quick sand job, and then uh, run it through the edge here to trim these up, get them nice and uh, smooth there. So let me do that real quick. All right, I'm gonna just use this paddle here and run it along here. All right, so I'm gonna edge these up. Plug it in. Definitely need a new blade, just burns it. All right, so I put the baseboard back. I've got the two front and back side rails. The uh, back one, I'm gonna go ahead and permanently uh, fix it using glue and then run some screws underneath it because that solid doesn't need to be perfectly aligned. Uh, then I'll run the uh, saw through up to here and then uh, just so I have a, a straight line to work off and then I'll mount the uh, the rear one the front one and then uh, use that to align this to make sure that it is perfectly 90 degrees so let me go ahead and mount that side there and then we'll get to going got my layer of glue there we can drop this on and use our fingers to make sure it's flush side to side and the back. That looks good. Now that this is glued together, I'm just gonna run some screws about four or five of them just along the bottom there. Just make sure that they're countersunk in. So I'll pre-drill just the, the short section there and then hit it with a bigger drill bit since I'm cheating and don't have my uh, other bits yet. 
and then just run those through there. This side is not the important side, so it just needs to be mounted. All right, just countersunk four screws here, here. The blade's gonna go right through the middle here, so it's not gonna be anywhere close. And then two on the ends. And that should be keep us fairly steady. All right, that back fence is on there. Still slides okay. Okay, so now what I wanna do is to run the blade through here the tracks are going to keep it in the same, always in the same path, and then just run it to just the front here, and stop. Then I'll mount the back brace, and then we can do alignments to get that. The back side's the important side, so I want to make sure that's straight. But yeah, let me run this through. I'm not going to do the full height yet. I just need to get a mark through here, so that'll be good for now. our pre-cut there that's going to be our set path every time so I can drop that back out of the way back then we could set this up And on this one, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to line it up a little bit above the edge. I'm going to go one screw on this side, just right about here, underneath, no glue. And then I'm going to use a square to get my 90 degrees, make sure it's all correct. And then once I've got that, then I'll clamp it, check it again, and then uh, if it's good, then I can put another screw on this side, and that, that'll be it. All right, I put one screw right about there, so that leaves me the ability to spin it. So what I want to do is to use my T and use the cut there. back a little bit more right about there back against that looks good Check. Looks good. So then I'll just put one screw here and then we're done. All right, now because the blade will come out over here, I want to put a couple of safety blocks. Basically, I'm just going to stack two blocks. I'm going to cut this in half and then put two blocks there. And then what that's going to do is so when I'm grabbing onto it, you don't have to worry about your thumb getting in the way. Plus what I'm going to do now is use the saw, basically the jig, how it's supposed to be by cutting this in half. Now this is exactly what I'm building this for, is to cut these 2 by 4 since that's primarily what I would use it. But we're just going to run it through the middle there. And... <laughs>
didn't get the blade high enough. All right, that'll be better. So that's what we want these safety blocks for. Stack them up there. And when I'm running this through, I don't have to worry about my hands getting in the way where the blade's gonna be. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the blade at the highest position and just kind of run it through here. Everything's done, everything's mounted permanently. Um, what I can do now is kind of break it in, just sliding it back and forth, make it a little bit smoother. Also, what I'm gonna be doing after this project is uh, sanding the whole top. I did a bit, about 80 grit, just to knock off the uh, the corrosion that was on here this is aluminum so it was like sandpaper with that corrosion but i got primarily most of it knocked off now i'll do up to like maybe like 500 grit or go to 200 300 500 get it really smooth and then i uh, wax the top wax the bottom of this and then it'll glide a lot better but pretty good already It's already loosening up a bit. And that's it. Now the main premise for this is that it's a perfect 90 degree anytime you want it. Just throw it on there. It only slides forward and back exactly 90 degree cuts. You don't have to worry about it because I have a really crappy fence here. That thing's very inaccurate. It's just old, low technology, budget. Uh, but with this here, I'm always perfectly 90 as long as it's butted against the backing there. Um, you, it's good for repetitive cuts because you could just block, uh, clamp on a block there, run it to wherever you need it, and then make your cut. Got our perfect cut. Oops. Bring it back, slide that across. Then 
you got your perfect perfect blocks exactly the same 90 degree cuts and just keep kicking them out there um, the biggest biggest reason why is this thing is not so scary anymore because you don't have to worry about boards against the the fence there getting jammed up and kicking back at you and throwing stuff and your arm getting caught in there uh, this keeps it pretty much all out of the way of the blade and then you have total control you just keep that block against the block and then just run it through it so makes things a lot easier so that's done next project is going to be creating a base for this uh, new bench grinder here um, I picked up a couple of rims from the uh, metal recycling place just down the street they gave them to me for free so that was cool um, I've got a 4x4 I've got some scrap wood that I think will work out good uh, just exact size, size as the base there and then uh, I've got some uh, bed frames which are basically angle iron that I just need to chop up and uh, create uh, some uh, brackets with and that'll put the uh, metal cutting saw to work and my welder and table saw and yeah and that should get us a nice little stand so that'll be coming up next all right so that is the latest shop update uh, hopefully you're finding these new projects interesting I uh, just want to get Pretty much all the the main equipment all set up and done and then uh i'll be able to kind of just do some actual projects <laughs> instead of doing projects on this new equipment only but got to get things set up but everything is looking really good it's coming together so very happy but uh, anyways keep an eye out for more shop updates and i'll see you next video bye